Hello, and welcome to a virtual tour of the Cosgrove Hernandez Lab at the University of Texas at Austin. My name is Elizabeth Cosgrove Hernandez, and I'm a professor of biomedical engineering here at UT Austin. Our lab focuses on developing new biomaterials. We believe that by building better medical devices, we can help people live longer and better. One of the areas of research in our lab is tissue engineering, where we provide the building blocks to help the body heal itself. In this video, my team will give you a tour of our lab and share a little bit about their projects using polymers to improve clinical outcomes. Take it from here, y'all. Hello, and welcome to the Cosgrove Hernandez Laboratory. In the Cosgrove Hernandez Lab, we utilize biomaterial science that captures the complexity of native tissues to restore function, generate replacement tissues, and advance the field of regenerative medicine. Our lab has the capability to fully develop our constructs from the development of novel polymers, fabrication of biomaterial constructs, and through structural, mechanical, and cellular response assessments. In this first area of the lab, we perform um, our synthesis of novel polymers and fabrication of biomaterials. We use techniques such as electrospinning, as well as hydrogel and emulsion templated foams to address current limitations of clinical modalities. Following the fabrication of biomaterials, we perform in-house assessments on the chemical, structural, and mechanical properties of our materials. For polymer characterization, we use infrared spectroscopy that provides us information on the chemical structure of the polymer, as well as gel permeation chromatography to determine the size of the polymers we use. For structural assessment, we have a scanning electron microscope that allows us to characterize the micro and nano features and materials. Lastly, we have two instruments that allow us to perform mechanical testing. The first is a dynamic analysis tester that allows us to perform material analysis under oscillatory and temperature controlled conditions, as well as a high resolution at smaller forces. The second instrument that we use for mechanical assessment is called an Instron. This allows us to perform uniaxial tensile testing and compression of our materials in order to determine the mechanical properties. So hi, I'm Sarah, and this is the biological side of the Cosgrove Fernandez lab. Um, this is where we do all of our cell culture assays. So over here, we have a couple of different warming baths. And then on this side, we also have two fume hoods and two biosafety cabinets. So during, in our fume hoods, we do things like RNA isolation. And then in our biosafety cabinets, we do all of our cell culture in a sterile environment. Then over here, we have our fridge to keep our cell reagents cold. And then we also have an incubator to grow our cells out in a nice warm environment. And on this aisle, we have a lot of different equipment. So here we have our flow cytometer and then our protein purifier. And then we have some basic lab equipment over here as well, like the centrifuge. And then over here, we have our lyophilizer. And then for our imaging needs, we have a bright field and fluorescent microscope. And then we also have a stereoscope. And then lastly, we have a plate reader and a PCR machine right next to our minus 80 degree freezer to store down our cells. So that is the lab tour of the biological side of the Cosgrove Hernandez lab. Hi, my name is Michael Green. I'm a postdoc here in the Cosgrove Hernandez lab, as well as a provost early career fellow in health disparities research. My project is focusing on developing an injectable hydrogel to improve bone marrow transplantation in sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is the world's most commonly inherited blood disorder and disproportionately affects individuals of African descent. Bone marrow transplantation is the only known cure for sickle cell disease, but account for less than 0.2% of the nearly 1 million transplantations that have been performed so far. This is largely due to the lack of genetically matched donors. And while the future of gene edited stem cells holds promise, the current techniques for transplantation of those stem cells are not efficient enough for sickle cell patients. Therefore, our goal is to develop a biomaterial-based cell carrier that can be directly injected into the bone marrow space and support stem cell engraftment, 
and facilitate repopulation of the marrow, ultimately curing all patients of sickle cell disease. It's Megan, I'm a fifth year graduate student in the Cosgrove Fernandez lab, and my research focuses on the development of damage resistant hydrogel coatings for cardiovascular applications. Um, hydrogel coatings are really useful for cardiovascular devices. Uh, we specifically make heart valves and vascular grafts because hydrogels have very high water contents and we can incorporate bioactive cues into them to encourage endothelial cell attachment and prevent protein adsorption that leads to platelet adhesion and ultimately thrombosis of our materials. So in order to decouple bioactive properties from mechanical properties of our cardiovascular devices, we use a coating that we can independently tune. Hydrogels are formed just by mixing a polymer. We dissolve it in solution with a photo initiator, cure it between glass plates, and place it on a UV plate in order to cause a photo initiated reaction. Um, and my work focuses on switching from our original hydrogel fabrication. So conventional hydrogels are really brittle. You can see this, if I just pull it a little bit, it snaps. Um, we would apply these hydrogel coatings to vascular grafts like this. And in the past, we've seen if we switch them too hard, they would crumble. Um, my research has focused on developing more damage resistant coatings. Uh, so here's like a bulk gel and we can see it stretches a lot more. Hello, my name is Dana Jenkins. My work in the Cosgrove Fernandez lab focuses on um, improving the bone regenerative capacity of our polymer scaffolds for 3D printing and injectable applications. So uh, I fabricate these scaffolds using a method called emulsion templating, in which I'm mixing two liquids that don't want to mix together. So you might have seen emulsion before when using salad dressing. So I have two liquids here uh, that are separated, and then I mix them together to form a more homogeneous solution with droplets suspended throughout. And then I polymerize it or solidify it in the state to form a uh, Porous scaffold. So I am now exploring different ways to modify the surface of these scaffolds uh, to have improved tissue to material interactions to better promote bone regeneration. Uh, examples of some of these scaffolds can be seen here, um, in which I've modified them in different ways, and now I'm exploring uh, their interactions with cells to see what might be the best avenue for. Uh, improve bone generation. Hi, I'm Gabriel Rodriguez Rivera. I'm a fifth year chemical engineering grad student at the lab. And my project is working with the development of, of injectable conductive hydrogels. So for these hydrogels, what we do is we have uh, two oligos of the material, one with the initiator and one with the reducing agent. And what will happen with this material is when they actually get mixed, they start to polymerize uh, and form a gel. So what we're showing here very quickly, it's a uh, how this gel cure. Uh, we can change the concentration of these disulfurane reagents that we add uh, in order to get uh, different gelation settings. So the conductivity of this material is provided by the ions that are in the solution. So this is the ionically conductive hydrogen. So what we do is we have these two different compounds. Uh, we load it here in the syringe and this material we inject it. After that, now they are mixed there, so we will allow them to cure. And once they are cured, we will uh, show the conductive properties. We have here an LED. So we're gonna connect this light to the hydrogel, just in, in any location. And now we're gonna uh, connect this to the battery. So as we can... Hello, my name is Yang. I'm working with Dr. Cosco Fernandez on developing an antimicrobial hydrogel foam wound dressing. In our daily life, we heal fast from acute wounds like paper cuts. However, the wound may not heal without additional treatments when a patient has diabetes or abnormal main function, especially bacterial infection and bell foam formation in the open wound area prevent the wound from closing and causing further damages. To achieve faster healing of chronic wounds, our lab has developed this new type of wound dressing. As you can see here, this wound dressing is notable for its porous structure that can absorb the exudates from the wound area while preserving the wound surface moisture balance. In the meantime, 
Antimicrobial agents can be delivered to the wound with encapsulated microspheres in the foam so that they can help clear bacteria and prevent further infection. We expect to achieve accelerated healing for the infectious chronic wounds with this newly developed wound dressing. Hello, my name is Andrew Robinson and I work on electrospin materials to develop vascular grafts that mitigate failure and coronary artery bypass grafting as well as durable synthetic heart valve materials. The method works by passing a polymer solution through a charged needle tip. And by charging the needle tip, the polymer is stretched into fibers that dry in air and are subsequently deposited on the rotating collector, resulting in a fibrous mesh. The advantage of the technique is that it allows for precise control over the fiber structure. We can produce materials that have a random fibrous orientation, fibers that are highly aligned, and fibers that have a wave pattern called tortuosity. These fiber structures allow me to control the resulting mechanical properties of the meshes that we develop in order to mitigate failure of cardiovascular devices. Hi, I'm Sarah, and in the Cosgrove Fernandez lab, I'm currently developing an electrospun wrap to improve bone healing of large bone defects. So I create these wraps through electrospinning, which uses electrostatic forces to create a fibrous scaffold, kind of like this one. Um, and so for this specific project, I'm using co-electrospinning to make a fibrous wrap with two different fiber types. So I will develop one fiber network to wrap around the bone site and release antibiotics to treat infection. And then I will integrate a secondary fiber network to guide the biological properties surrounding the bone site by releasing native growth factors and proteins. By the successful development of this wrap, we will improve the healing of traumatic bone defects that can lead to amputation or severe disability.